Hey, hey, friends. Uh, Paolo Guy, World Phoenix here. Hope you're all doing well. Um, it is a beautiful day, despite the fact that it is a very light, gentle rain falling. Um, but I'm staying dry. I'm under. I'm sitting at our bar, and there's a large sort of marketplace umbrella that covers this whole bar and all the stools and such. So stay nice and dry here. I'm sitting out here having a cup of chamomile tea. Um, but I also wanted some caffeine, so I put a normal tea bag in there with a chamomile. Uh, and I'm reading a new book called The London Sales Society. I love British mysteries, uh, and that's what I believe this is. I haven't started it yet, but... Anyway, such a nice afternoon for that, just to sit out here and listen to the birds and the gentle rain and drink some hot tea and read a murder mystery. Um, but uh, one thing I did, I do want to talk about something. How I wish with you guys. Uh, I was watching, um, I love YouTube. I love watching YouTube videos. And I was watching this video uh, early this morning about this woman who, her whole channel is based on her um her experience with uh, doing magic with demons and such, this like dark witchcraft, I forget what she calls it, but uh, you know, she believes that she is uh, making these uh, acts with demons and devils and such with, and that they are blessing her life in some way, shape or form. So my, my thought was, well then what, what are they asking in return? You know, because she never mentioned that. So that's concerning. Uh, I would not trust any kind of spirit or especially if it's a demon. <laughs> I mean, anything that says, okay, I'll give you this, but in return, you know, you, 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 you need to give me something in return. And, uh, I would not trust that. I would not, uh, I would not do something like that. I just don't, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I found it interesting that she did that, did that, but, Never once, at least in the video that I watched, uh, it was over an hour long. Never once did she mention any kind of protective work. She never mentioned the price that she has to pay. She just mentioned all these like wonderful life benefits she got from doing this demonic stuff. And I mean, she was like, of course, shrouded in black and dripping with pentagrams and like surrounded by black candles and skeleton heads and such. And it was all very spooky. And I just thought that is like, I don't know. It's such a it's such a different lifestyle than I live. I mean, if that's for you, that's great. If you want to live in darkness and creepiness, I'd rather be outside. You know, growing plants and such. I mean, those are life choices, of course. But I just can't imagine. I just can't imagine living that way. Like, are, are you in fear all the time? Like, I would not want to. I would not want to live that way. Or like, just in such a dark world. I don't know. That's just me. I'm not. You know. I just, I, you know, I hope she's okay. I hope she, uh, whatever she's doing, I mean, she's saying it works for her. I mean, I just think it's, it looks like a very uh, gloomy life to live, but, you know, it might all be fake too. She might turn off her camera and switch off her studio lighting and open the blinds and it's just one backdrop of spookiness, you know, and then the rest of the place is lovely. Who knows? I mean, you know, you don't know, but Anyway, it just made me think that uh, that uh, that uh, excuse me that you open yourself up to this sorts of um, you know the more you open up yourself up to anything, the more exposed you get. Uh, hang on. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, and so I think um, it's important to do things like the the like I talk about the the lesser banishing ritual. The lesser invoking ritual is basically it's basically the same ritual but the invoking ritual you're doing the earth pentacle a different way because you're instead of pushing things away from you you're pulling good things toward you so that's kind of maybe in the morning you do the lesser invoking ritual or pentagram you know just pull good things toward you for the day and then before you go to bed do the banishing ritual too okay I've enjoyed the goodness. Now let's push away the badness and, you know, go to bed. I know that's an oversimplification of such a, a, a profound ritual, but there it is. Um, I just think it's important to do that stuff, uh, protect yourself because you don't know, even like, you know, those of us that just kind of focus on good stuff. I mean, yeah, even powwow has a few things that are kind of a little sketch, uh, you know, but you want to make sure that you're in a good space, that you're, 
that you're you're surrounded by like quote unquote light um and such with so there is i was looking through uh jake richard's appalachian folk healing it's the osman and steel uh guide to health or household living or whatever it used to be called um <clears throat> and one of the things that i i like about this book is there are a lot of, well anyway i found a good one in this book that i want to a good uh, uh, uh uh, charm that I want to share with you guys. And this is if you feel that you have been for hexed, even whether it's been by your own, you know, a mistake that you've made and opened yourself up to something negative, or if somebody has specifically targeted you, um, it's just a good way to uh, release the person from that bewitchment um, for hexment, whatever you want to call it. And then you get kind of a fresh start where you can, uh, build up your protections again. And the reason I chose this one is because there's something within it that ties it to lesser banishing ritual or lesser invoking ritual that, well, really the middle pillar exercise, I guess you could say, um, but I'll get into that in a second. So how to release persons who are bewitched. Three false tongues have bound, and here you state the Christian name of the person. So three false tongues have brown, bound Red Smith. Three holy tongues have spoken for Red Smith. The first is God the Father, the second is God the Son, and the third is God the Holy Ghost. They will give Red Smith flesh and blood, peace and comfort. Flesh and blood will grow upon your bones again, which was lost on you, as surely as the flesh and blood grew on our dear Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the assumption that the person, you know, if somebody's been for hexed or overtaken by something demonic, uh, it said their body starts wasting away because uh, you know the hex or the demon is like feeding on that person so they start wasting away well this is saying your flesh and blood you know flesh and blood will grow back on your bones again um if any man or woman has trampled on you god and the body of mary the mother of our dear lord jesus christ will bless you uh trample being can be anything it could be for hexing it could be walking all over you it could be literally physically harming you but or it can be demonic energy overtaking you trampling over you heaven is above thee earth is beneath and thou art between <clears throat> in the name of god the father god the son and god the holy ghost so i love that that's it that's everything I just said is the thing, but I love that heaven is above, the earth is beneath, and thou art between. Because in the middle pillar exercise, we're doing, you know, that octa where we're calling down the light of God, the thou art. Uh, and then Malkuth is the kingdom, it's earth. It's we're pulling that up and meeting in the middle, um, you know, in the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. But we're 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 visualizing ourselves standing between with the earth beneath us and God above us, and we are between, and we're drawing those powers together within ourselves. And I think that's a very very uh, uh, a very powerful ritual. Um, and it's survived, or it's inspired by, or it's part of. You know, in Catholicism, they say you know they cross themselves. We you know, the Christians cross ourselves when we're thinking, oh boy, God protect me from this. But we're doing basically a mini middle pillar exercise, you know, Ata, Melki, Begabula, or Begabula. So, I don't know. I just think that's cool. Um, the, 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 the sign of the cross is kind of like the mini version of that middle pillar exercise, but it's also a reminder that God is above us, earth is beneath us, we are in between and we are connected. You know, that we're not separated from. It's just kind of like our place in between the heavenly and the earthly realms. And take a sip of this tea. Um, starting to rain a little bit farther now, but I'm still dry, so it's good. Uh, but anyway, that's why I think like the the the, the lesser invoking and the lesser dungeon ritual are really important. And I think things like... Um, you know, even sometimes before dinner, like we used to say a prayer before we ate and then Josani kind of outgrew it. And then now it's rare for us to eat dinner together because we all have crazy schedules. But I still, before I eat, I like to make the sign of the cross as, you know, it's my way of thanking God for my food, but also asking for a blessing on myself as I partake in the food. Um, 
just little sort of ritualistic, uh, religious, magical, spiritual exercises uh, that can help us stay protected and feel good. Um, yeah, I just keep thinking about that video of that girl. She, uh, I don't know, it just seems like such a shame to be, just be surrounded in darkness all the time. And I, uh, you know, she, she seems like it's working for her and it's giving her the kind of life that she wants. Um, I just can't help think that, uh, you know, someday the price for all of that is going to have to be paid. Um, you know, that's, I think that's the reality of magic in any sense, even the good stuff, you know, I think there is kind of a, a price for, for doing stuff. You know, I think, uh, like with powwow, you know, no matter what, you, we could, if we devoted our whole lives to just doing good and helping others and giving to others, eventually we're going to have to, eventually I think that would kind of weigh down on you and you re, you start to retreat from the world a little bit. You start to become a little more separate from the world. I find that with myself very much so. Um, me talking to these videos and you guys watching, this is my way of talking to the world. But ask anybody in my family, I, I don't like to leave my property. Uh, you know, if I have to leave for work and then come home, I don't want to go anywhere else. I want to stay here. This is my sanctuary. This is my safety away from the world. Um, and I feel that more and more as I get older. Uh, I just want to withdraw from people. So that's the price to pay for, you know, the kind of work that I do. I couldn't imagine the price for doing all this nefarious stuff, like, because making a deal with like a demon, you know, in exchange for riches or fame or whatever it is she's asking for. She's getting those things, but you know, a demon isn't just, isn't a kind friendly spirit that just has all this stuff to give. There's a price for them. So I don't know. Just be careful with what you're doing. Make sure you're doing your protective stuff. Make sure you know what you're doing and understand what you're doing and take care of yourselves. Um, and like, living a quote unquote magical life and being a magical person, it doesn't have to be about uh, skeleton heads and black candles and, you know, black clothes and shiny pentagrams and such. I mean, you can have magic life in your life just by, you know, walking the path with God and planting your herbs and growing your food and doing your healing charms and such. I mean, I don't know. I'm just, I guess I'm just kind of saying there is a better way, but you know, if that works for you, that's great. I just hope you're uh, protected and taking care of yourself and uh, just mindful of what impact, whatever you do has on the people around you. Um, even this kind of stuff, you know, it would have a, an impact on the people around me in a, hopefully a good way, but maybe a negative way. I don't know. So anyway, I'm rambling at this point. Happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. I love it. Uh, I wanted just Sonny to go to the comic book shop. It's like free comic book day, but him and his friend are playing video games and they're drawing and such. They don't really want to go anywhere. And that's okay. I didn't really want to go either, but um, that's it. Enjoy your day. God bless you guys. Love you. And we will talk again soon.